Tonight, our travels bring us overseas as we cross the Atlantic for another visit to jolly old England. Our same-day coverage coming to you from the tough east end of London known as Bethnal Green, where so many top British fighters have fought, like Alan Minter, Lloyd Huntington, and Nigel Penn. Tonight, a boxing doubleheader featuring a world championship with a South American flair. In our main event, the belt that once belonged to local favorite Prince Nassim Hamed is up for grabs as reigning WBO featherweight champion Julio Pablo Chacon of Argentina defends his title against highly rated Victor Polo from Colombia. And in our co-feature, we've got an extra added attraction as the always exciting four-time world champion Johnny Mivita Loca Tapia returns to the ring to face Eduardo Alvarez. The pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico, remains one of boxing's most interesting characters, and tonight marks his first professional fight outside the United States. As we welcome you inside the cozy York Hall, the most famous small boxing venue in England dating back to the turn of the century. Capacity here about 12 to 1400. Traditionally, almost every English fighter passes through these hallowed halls. The knowledgeable fight fans of this working class neighborhood in eager anticipation of tonight's twin bill. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert ringside from London, England. Welcome to the second half of our transatlantic Showtime Championship boxing doubleheader. Tonight, Julio Pablo Chacon, a little known but skillful world champ, makes his American television debut. And Johnny Tapia, a former champ who is desperate to draw the spotlight for one last time. Argentina's Chacon, who will defend against Victor Polo, hopes to follow in the proud tradition established by countrymen Pascual Perez, Carlos Manzón, and Victor Galindez. Chacon won a portion of the featherweight title last year. His new goal is to join the division's very best. For his part, Johnny Tapia, who tackles Eduardo Alvarez, no longer has to worry about establishing a reputation. Tapia has been ranked among the best fighters in the world for the better part of a decade. As Mi Vida Loca approaches his 35th birthday, one last big fight might provide a much-needed touch of sanity. Let's go backstage to the dressing rooms. In the seven months since Johnny Tapia crushed Cesar Soto, he's retired and unretired. He's reinvigorated, gunning for a fifth world title. Shouldn't be that tough for a guy who survived incomprehensible adversity, losing his parents to murder, a cocaine addiction, jail time, and pronounced clinically dead three times. Tonight, he wants to win big, stating his case for a showdown with Marco Antonio Barrera or Nassim Hamed. And our first look at Julio Pablo Chacon, bronze medalist at the 96 Olympics, representing Argentina. 44 fights by each 26. His title winning thrashing of previously unbeaten Coco Kovac put him on the map. But is the self assured Chacon underestimating Victor Polo? Will he be overwhelmed by Polo's fast pace and smothering style? And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, former world champion Bobby Chez. And Bobby, what's your take on the careers of Tapia and Chacon today? Well, Steve, one might think with Johnny Tapia, 34, closely to 35, that maybe he's on his way out and that his better times are behind him. And the young Chacon, 26, newly crowned champion, is the future of the featherweight division. But in Johnny Tapia's last fight, he fought Cesar Soto, a veteran of over 50 fights, never having been stopped. Johnny blew through him in three short rounds, showing no signs of fading. And Chacon, whose most impressive victory was in the title fight, has yet to prove himself. So I think after tonight, we'll find out if Johnny Tapia is poised to get a fifth world title and if Chacon is indeed the future of the featherweight division. All right, Bobby, so it's Tapia up first, Chacon second in our main event. Before we get to our first fight, as usual, we invite Showtime subscribers with internet access to visit our website of the boxing area at show.com. Show.com is the home of fighter bios, records and information on upcoming Showtime championship boxing and Showbox telecast. In addition, you can find out more about your favorite Showtime original programming and series. Once again, the address is show.com. That's S-H-O.com. Let's get down to business. Tonight's installment of Showtime Championship Boxing coming to you from picturesque London, England is another co-production with B Sky B TV. Our thanks to the good folks at B Sky B for their cooperation and assistance in this telecast back to the States. Well, we're set for our first fight. The colorful, exuberant Johnny Tapia steps back in the ring after the extended layoff to meet relatively unknown Eduardo Alvarez. 
taking the bout on short notice, Eduardo Alvarez from Cordoba, Argentina, three-time Argentinian champion, former South American champ at 122, several minor titles, 29 and four with just six knockouts. Fighters from Argentina known for being brave and fit, giving their all, but on balance, Alvarez doesn't have nearly the skills, experience, or quality of opposition as Tapia, and he's a light puncher. Lost his last two on knockouts, including his only world title shot, the IBF junior featherweight belt, eighth-round knockout loss to South African Lalo Ledwaba, who dominated throughout. And Alvarez could also be intimidated, Bobby, since his, Tapia is his idol. Is he overmatched, or is he catching Tappy at the right time? You know what, Steve, not just on paper, but looking at the tapes of Alvarez, I think he's just in over his head. I just spoke about how well Tapia took care of Harden's veteran, Cesar Soto. Soto has skills and toughness, and I don't think Alvarez brings either of the, the two to the table the way Soto did. And I tell you what, I think it'll be a miracle if he lasts the distance. Only his second fight outside his native Argentina, the other right here in England with Led Waba. Off a second round KO loss to someone named Fabio Oliva in April for the South American 122 pound title, fought most of his career at 122 pounds. And he'll be facing Mi Vida Loca, my crazy life. There he is, Johnny Tapia, four-time world champion, fighting on British soil for the first time as a pro. Was here at 84 as an amateur. His last fight late June, the impressive third-round knockout of durable former featherweight champ Cesar Soto. In August, he surprised some by announcing his retirement. Said he had a lot of personal stuff, including the, the death of a close friend, but he's back. And here he comes, and he's hearing it from the crowd. They know about Johnny worldwide as he makes his pro debut in England. Many of them standing and applauding Johnny Tapia. And while money is certainly a motivator, so is the fifth world title. With Hamed and Barrera looming a win here, he could get the winner of our main event, Chacon versus Polo for the WBO belt. Probably are the years of all the hard battles eroding his skills, or is he getting better with age, as he said. You know, Steve, I'm not sure if Tapia is getting any better with age at this point, but he probably is fighting a bit smarter. I thought his going heavily to the body against Cesar Soto early was a sign of maturity and smart, not necessarily being any better at this age. Now, there's no doubt that the years and the multiple battles have taken its toll, but he's not really shown any serious signs of slowing down. But age and time will stop for no man. Eventually, he's going to have to slow down a little bit. And a sign of respect and admiration from the British fight fans here for Johnny Tapia. Let's size them up right now as we check out the tail of the thing. Tapia, eight years older, the big three, five next month. Tapia gives away two inches in height, five and a half inches in reach at yesterday's weigh-in both fighters right on the mark and the key British rules for this non-title fight where the referee is the sole arbiter no standing eight count no three knockdown rule a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round if a fighter cannot continue due to an injury from an accidental foul he is declared a loser by TKO so here at historic York Hall in London England we are getting ready for Johnny Tapia versus Eduardo Alvarez Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to historic your call here in London, England, as we have a big night of action coming away, and it's all brought to you courtesy of Frank Warren's Sports Network in association with Showtime, Yusuf Mirad Mohammed, and sponsored by Red Square. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge, Robert Smith, chief physician at ringside, Dr. Ashwin Patel, timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Peter McCann and Greg Hugh. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, also scoring the action from Kent, England, Richie Davis. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing in a featherweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing red, white, and blue trunks, joining us all the way from Cordoba, Argentina. He weighed in at nine stone, or 126 U.S. pounds. His record stands at 29 wins, only four losses. Six of his wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Eduardo 
His opponent across the ring on my right, ready to fight out of the blue corner in this 10 round attraction, wearing black trunks with silver trim, hailing from and representing Albuquerque, New Mexico in the United States. He weighed in the same as his opponent, nine stone or 126 US pounds. His record stands at 50 wins, two losses, two draws, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, making his UK debut, please welcome the four-time champion of the world, known as Mi Vida Loca, introducing Johnny Tapia. Once again, our referee in charge, Ricky Davis, now to give instructions, 10 rounds of boxing schedule. Third man of the ring, Richie Davis, also a London taxi driver, former fighter whose first fight was right here in 1968 in this arena. And in England, a non-title bout has no ringside judges. Make sure you can be a good, clean contest. Be at by my commands at all times. Shake hands now. Good luck to you both. It'll be scored strictly by the man who just spoke, the referee, Richie Davis. If it goes to a decision, he'll simply go to the winner and raise his arm in victory. But the odds are heavily stacked against this one going the distance. Johnny Tapia usually gets right to it. Looks to send a message early. Alvarez, more of a, a boxer who looks to outwork his opponent. He's a technical guy. Lacks punching power. The exuberant, flashy Tapia, who is a walking billboard for religion, as you can see with all the, the tattoos. The biggest adjoining tattoo representing the gates of heaven. In his prime, the overall speed. The sharp counter punching of Tapia. Busy, lots of combinations, and I think that's what you had as one of your keys to victory. Well, you know what, Johnny Tapia is a terrific combination puncher. He has great speed with his feet, with his hands, and move in, move out. He'll hit you on the way in, on the way out. He's taking his time right now, and he's working with a guy who doesn't have his ability, doesn't have his experience, doesn't have his speed or his power. So he should be in the driver's seat. goes upstairs says Tapia he's got Alvarez pinned in the corner and he is wailing away all over Alvarez smothering him to his credit Alvarez is keeping his hands tight blocking almost all those shots if not totally partially that was good through and down he goes a thumping knockdown for Tapia beautiful right hand to the temple Steve it slips through and I don't think he's getting up Tapia does a back flip on the back crowd and that'll do it Alvarez is a nasty belly ache. It was a beautiful left uppercut with hook to the belly that got inside, slipped in, and just as that got in, the hands came down a little bit, right hand snuck through over the top to the temple, and Alvarez cannot finish the fight. Not even finish the first round. Eduardo Alvarez, no match for the Vida Loca. Johnny Tapia just trying to get some work in here before uh, a real significant fight, looking for his fifth world title down the road in the near future. He goes to 51-2-2, 27 knockouts. Coming back successfully after the long, long layoff since June. And with this one in the bag, one of the scenarios for Tapia, as mentioned, could be to fight the winner of tonight's main event for the WBO featherweight crown, particularly if it's Chacon. He's not certain about Colo because of the height. He may make the determination based on what he sees later. Or he could challenge IBF featherweight champ Manuel Medina. Good show of sportsmanship there. There's Danny Romero, senior, the trainer, who is temporarily replacing James Buddy McGirt, who is out training Arturo Gatti for Tehran Millet. Johnny Tappy ever the aggressor working on the, in the corner, first getting in, uh, Alvarez in trouble. You see like a quadruple left hook to the body. The first couple not blocked. One eventually slips through and you'll see a right hand come up to the temple. Johnny just staying on top of him, working on the inside. Alvarez doing his best to block as much as he could, but Johnny has very quick hands and he throws them from very awkward angles. 
There you see a couple again, the left hook's on the side. Being blocked. Right hand up top, not landing real clean. One of these left hooks slips in right in the middle, and then a right hand goes up inside to catch him on the temple. He slides out. There's the left hook that hurt to the belly, and then Johnny eventually would come up with a right hand there to the temple as the hands came down, and Alvarez is done. Tapia forcing Alvarez into the ropes less than 45 seconds into the fight and never let him get away. And here we'll look at the end of it again from the inside opposite angle. The left hook that comes through into the belly right in there. And then the right hand will come up top to the temple right there. And that left hook to the belly hurt more than the right to the temple, but that right to the temple was a coup de grace. And the celebratory backflip. Back flip. <laughs> Johnny Tapia trademark. He salutes the crowd, the crowd salutes him. 122 of round number one. Johnny Tapia picks up his seventh first round knockout in his illustrious career. The official announcement from Jimmy. Tapia comes a long way for a very short fight. His first trip to England is a pro that he made it count. Short but sweet. So a first round knockout for Johnny Tapia over relatively unknown, unheralded Eduardo Alvarez, clearly not in the same class as Mi Vida Loca. Coming up next, our main event. WBO featherweight champion Julio Pablo Chacon defends his crown against warhorse Victor Polo. Let's go into the dressing room of the champion. Julio Pablo Chacon of Argentina has held the title since June when he uh, stunned Hungarian Coco Kovac. Six round stoppage in Kovac's backyard of Budapest. Two and oh since, both by KO. This guy likes to stay busy. Fought in June, August, November, and now January. A fight almost every two months. His busiest year, 97. 13 fights. That's over a fight per month. Let's welcome John Rawlings. Well, that was spectacular while it lasted. And Johnny Tapia with me here at ringside. My crazy life brought you here to London, Johnny. I made it. First of all, I'd like to give a lot of thanks and praise to God. And you, Niall, Riley, Irene, I love you. We miss you. This is for Charles and I. You got a terrific reception here. That must have been good to hear. It was very beautiful here. The people treated me like a king. I respect them, and I tell everybody cheers. What about the fight itself? Because you looked sharp in that. I felt very strong. I just had to get used to the timing. The altitude, everything got me. We combined it in one, and we took him out. And coming, coming near to your 35th birthday as well. I mean, uh, the story goes on. The story's going to continue going. I don't think it's ever going to stop. I love you, Gamma. Gapa Albuquerque, I'm still your champion. Well, it was a spectacular finish, and uh, I think we can uh, have a chance to look at it again, just exactly how it came. Talk us through it. Right there, I was trying to set him up. Uppercut went to the body. I knew that I hurt him. I went around. Right hand, left hook. Caught him. Absolutely beautiful. It was, it was a goodbye shot. Happy birthday, Freddy. Ray Hamdala. And Matt. So, so Johnny, clearly at 34, there's still a little bit left in the tank. <laughs> where, where, where do you go from here? You say you want another world title shot. I'm hoping and praying if God gets me well for this next one, oh, it would be another world title fight, a world title fight on Showtime. There are some champions out there. Who would you like to fight in an ideal world? It does not matter to me. The Prince has been calling me out. Let's see if that gets done, but any champion out there I would fight. Maybe, maybe Barrera? Maybe Burrell. Burrell is a very well-respected champion, a champion of the world, and a great one, too. Well, it was certainly spectacular while it lasted, Steve. And uh, this man, Johnny Tapia, he's got a lot left. All right, John, thank you so much. The engaging, ebullient Johnny Tapia is back, and he has that fifth world title directly in his sights. We are one down, one to go. Our main event upcoming, the WBO featherweight championship, Chacon Polo, first 
Here's what's coming up next month on Showtime. The torch has been passed and a new generation of fighters has emerged. Get the shot solved right away. With the selfless dedication to the sport that their idols once had. You had the dream, now let's make it happen. Tough young scrappers eager to make their name and hungry to make their mark. Now watch them chase their dreams in the ring. When unbeaten number five ranked Hercules T. Bellow takes on highly touted Johnny Molnar to prove who is the future of the welterweight division on Showbox The New Generation. Saturday, February 2nd at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific only on Showtime. On February 9th, Showtime Championship Boxing presents England's biggest threat in the junior welterweight division, Ricky Hatton. Undefeated with 26 wins, 21 by knockout, and he's just one fight away from a title shot. Plus, defending his European Championship is the fighting Irishman, Michael Gomez. Ricky Hatton, Michael Gomez. Saturday, February 9th at 10, only on Showtime, America's number one boxing network. As we settle in for our main event, South America's Julio Pablo Chacon versus Victor Polo for the WBO Featherweight Championship. Chacon on the left has fought almost every two months since June. Polo on the right hasn't been in the ring in about seven months. So Chacon, who also has the youth, should be sharper than Polo. Yet there's something about Polo's aggressive, fast-paced style that could produce a victory. Will the title change hands tonight on British Shores? We will soon find out. Coming up next from London, England, our main event, Julio Pablo Chacon defends his WBO featherweight title against number two rated Victor Polo, an ultra-aggressive southpaw. 